And so welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us again. We're so excited for another Exploring Insects workshop with Nessa. Um, so if you have any comments during the day, Nessa may ask you to put um, comments into the chat box. There's also a Q&A box. So if there's any questions you want us to get back to and answer at the end, put those in the Q&A box and we'll be able to find them later. And so uh, my name is Eleanor and I work with the Kerry Biosphere Reserve. Um, and I'm delighted to be here again today with Dean and Nessa. So Dean's going to mention a few things um, that he has going on in the Dublin Bay Biosphere first before we get into the insects with Nessa. Thanks, Eleanor. I just wanted to say, yeah, um, we've got a couple of competitions um, and they're aimed at young people. So whilst we've got a captive audience, you guys, um, I want to share that with you. So we've uh, a young nature bloggers competition. That's something that you can do over the summer. There's a, a August deadline on that um, where we want young people to write interesting articles about their connection with nature or maybe some interesting wildlife that they like. So a maximum of 500 words and they can include um, a picture if they want to go with it. Um, so that's a young nature bloggers competition. That's an international competition because the Kerry Biosphere and the Island Manor Biosphere are also involved and there's some fan fantastic prizes. We've also a calendar competition. So we want your artwork. So if you want to draw arts work that um, encapsulates our biospheres that'd be amazing and so again it can be nature it can be culture it can be people it can be heritage whatever um so we want that um from you guys uh, that's a much shorter deadline that's end of this month um so details on our website definitely um before i hand over to nessa eleanor there was we had a special, uh, well, with everyone's special, but we had um, an international audience last week. Is that right? Yes, yes. So after last week's session, I had an email from someone who had joined us from the United States of America. So they had got up at 5 a.m. to watch the Exploring Insects with Nessa. So we were delighted to hear from them, and I hope they'll watch this one again, but maybe not live because it is first thing in the morning. So they'll be watching back on the YouTube channel, which everyone can do because we'll be rec recording this and then we'll upload it afterwards to the YouTube channel so you can always watch it back. But thanks, huge thanks to everyone for logging in, especially those making a special effort getting up so early in the morning. So Nessa, we're going to hand over to you and we're going to be learning more about insects today. So um, maybe you'll enlighten us. Fantastic. Christine, Looking forward to it. Thanks, Eleanor. Uh, just a little tally and we have at least 18 different counties joining us this morning. I'm so impressed and uh, delighted to have you all here. So I'm Nessa, Nessa Darcy, and I'm a creative entomologist. So my mission is to reintroduce humans to their natural habitat through colourful encounters with insects. And that involves webinars like this, school visits, workshops, outings. I also do surveys to, um, to find out what insects are living in a habitat and how we can protect them. And I make art about insects. And today uh, I'm also going to sing about insects. So uh, we have lots of interesting experiments lined up for you today. Um, uh, so last, and during the last webinar, you found out how I use my eyes to, to do my work, to find and identify and record insects. And you learned a bit about that yourselves. And I must say, I confess, I don't spend nearly as much time listening to insects as I should. So today we're going to focus on that, using our sense of hearing to explore the insect world. And uh, exploring insects through your different senses um, has the added bonus of being able to help you to achieve your Biosphere Award, uh, which Dean Miller might tell you something about later on. Um, so I'm going to start off uh, by showing you a few slides. Where's my share screen button? Here we go. Bear with me, because I have it open on the wrong page. So here we go, exploring insects through the sense of sound and hearing. Uh, here's me on an a insect outing in Red Rock in Hoth, and we're going to see a few, a couple of insects that you can find in Hoth in County Dublin in a little while. Um, so as well as working with insects, I'm also in an intercultural choir called Discovery Gospel Choir. So we sing songs from all around the world, and today we're going to hear about insects who sing songs and play music. 
uh, we'll also be visiting another country to sing one of their songs about insects. And we'll be writing, we'll be taking on a, an ambitious experiment to write a poem together, all, what, 230 classrooms of us. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so as you go along, um, and as you learn a bit about how insects communicate and how other insects pick up the sounds and how we hear insects, you might be thinking um, about what insects are communicating and how you would describe it so that you can have a chance to put that into poetry at the end of the webinar. So humans are, of course, part of nature and Dublin Bay Biosphere is my habitat and it's our nature to communicate through sound and music. So uh, we make musical instruments, we write songs, we dance to music and we uh, pass on information to each other in over 7,100 different languages around the planet. So I have a question for you and you can put your answers into the chat box. Why do you think that animals like humans and insects make sounds and pick up sounds? Why do we speak? And why do we make music? What, what is the purpose of communicating through sounds? And Dean and Eleanor, you can, if you have any ideas yourself, uh, you can do that too. So it's to, so I'm getting lots of answers in here now, faster than I can read them. Um, they make sounds, they can communicate. And they might, might make sounds if they're scared. So they might make a sound to warn off a predator, for example. Um, to make friends, exactly, to call out to other insects and or other humans um, and get to know each other, to defend their territory, to tell where there is food or prey. Aha, it's an interesting one. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, certain insects like the honeybee will dance, uh, dancing more so, I suppose, than making music, but um, they'll dance to communicate where they're where there's food, where there's pollen and nectar to forage. Um, to find each other, yes. So a lot of insects will make sounds to call out for a mate, to find a mate and for, for survival. Yeah, so we can understand each other. And to communicate and to warn nearby predators. And some animals, of course, will communicate to each other to let each other know that there are predators. So the other day I saw um, some blackbirds being attacked by a magpie and the, mag the blackbirds are making so much noise that a whole bunch of different birds, different species of birds came to try and mob the blackbird or mob the magpie and protect the blackbirds. And they make sounds to hunt. Um, if they can't see, they make sounds to find their way. That's an excellent point. Uh, to find where food is. So lots and lots of different reasons. Um, someone's saying because their eyesight isn't very good. That's definitely true for some insects. Their the sounds that they make may be more useful to them than their vision. Self-defense, survival, to be safe. This is great. So you all you all have an idea of what um, what use sound is in communication. To make themselves sound bigger than they are, that's a nice one. Okay, thank you, great answers. So um, here we have a, a picture of a human, a human animal making an instrument out of wood. That instrument is called, I don't know if you can see me now, it's called a mandolina. Oh, it's kind of invisible. <laughs> it's called a mandolina and it's, a, it's an instrument from Madagascar made out of wood. Now this is out of tune because I don't know how to tune it, but it's a cool instrument. And we're going, we're also looking here at insects that use their body parts. Where's my slide choker? They use their body parts like musical instruments to create sounds, to communicate with each other. So these two creatures, the speckled bush cricket and the common field grasshopper, can be found in Ireland. I found these two in Hose um, in County Dublin. And um, crickets, the different, one of the differences between crickets and grasshoppers is that crickets will rub their wings together to make a sound and grasshoppers rub their legs against their wings to make a sound. 
So they have these kind of pegs on their wings and their legs that, um, that they rub against each other to create a sound, kind of like the pegs on this thumb piano or kalimba. Can you see that? This is an instrument called a kalimba or a thumb piano. So imagine that these are on the, the edge of the grasshopper's legs and they're rubbing it against their wing to make a sound. So that's how they communicate. And we, oops, I'm just looking at my notes here. We, um, we pick up sound vibrations with our ears, um, but insects have these things called tympana, that's the plural of tympanum. And it's like a little eardrum, but it might be on their knees, or it might be on their abdomen, or it might be under their belly. So, um, whoops. There's a lot of information to learn about how insects make sound, so bear with me while I peek at my notes every so often, so I don't lose track. Um, we've got 10 species of grasshoppers and crickets in Ireland. That's seven grasshoppers and three bush crickets. And we used to have a mole cricket, which is thought to be extinct now. So keep an eye out for that, because if you find that, that'd be something really special. Whoops. So another way that insects make sound is by buzzing their wings. So when they're flying, their wings are motoring so much that they're making a buzzing sound. Now, can anyone tell me what are the insects you're seeing in these images? Pop your answers in the chat box there. So they're not wasps. There are honeybees there. Ah, someone's got it. There's a hoverfly as well. So we've got two honeybees at the side and the main picture is a picture of a hoverfly. Now that particular hoverfly is also called a drone fly because of the sound that it makes and it mimics a honeybee. So it uses, it borrows the sound of the honeybee um, to make it sound like something that stings, even though it's completely harmless. And it also looks like a honeybee and flies like a honeybee. So it's really a master of um, doing impressions. And it will also hang out in the same places that the honeybee does. So any predators will avoid it. Does um, that make it a wannabe? A wannabe, it does. Just, just, just a guess. Dean, you have the best of worst jokes. That's perfect. <laughs> it's a wannabe. Um, oh, someone's saying hoverflies are their favourite. Perfect. So if you have any other cool hoverfly facts that you want to share with us, just pop those in the chat box. Um, another thing about um, the way that some insects buzz their wings is that um, it makes bumblebees very effective pollinators. So they'll go inside the flower and they'll buzz really rapidly and really strongly and that knocks all the pollen off onto their furry bodies and then they can go to another place. And researchers in South Korea have found that bumblebees may use a loud warning buzz to tell birds to buzz off out of their nest holes so they can steal their nest holes and set up a nest there themselves because they like the way that it already has a nest so it's nice and cozy. So there's a lot they can communicate through sound. Now, this is a garden tiger moth. That's a, a species we have in Ireland. Um, we tend to think that Irish species maybe are a bit more dull than those in tropical countries, but look at the coloration on this. Um, it uses, as we discovered last week, it uses those colors um, to, as a warning, so a visual warning to predators, but they're no, they're no use at nighttime when nothing can see them. So when they're being chased by bats and the bats are using their sonar to find them, these moths will send out a clicking sound which warns the bat that they taste bad. So the bat will avoid them. And that's a common pipistrelle bat you see at the bottom there. And a, the caterpillar is a ruby tiger moth caterpillar and they'll, those will do the same thing with the clicking sounds. So um, I found these moths in County Offaly. I don't know if we have anyone here from Offaly. I didn't see that on the list, but I hope we do. You've got some fantastic moths there. Um, 
so what does anyone remember what was the name of the moth that we drew at the last webinar you remember there was a crime and some honey was stolen from a hive and we had to uh, draw a picture an identical picture of the the criminal who stole the honey from the hive and yes you're absolutely right it's the death's head hawk moth so everyone lots of people have got that there well remembered so i there were hundreds of pictures that people sent in and they were absolutely fantastic i had so much fun looking through them but i'll just show you a, a few examples with the uh, the various different features illustrated stunning pictures i'm going to keep them all um and just look at them every so often for to cheer myself up because they're just brilliant uh, and also it showed that you your listening skills are very good because we you were listening to my de description of the moth and took in a lot of information and detail from that so there it is the death's head hawk moth um we looked we looked at how visually stunning it is but now we're going to find out what it sounds like so I have a video somewhere <laughs> uh, here, and I'm going to share that with you. Now let me know if the video quality is okay and if you can hear the sounds. Just give me a thumbs up if everything is in order. So that's the sound of a death's head hawk moth trying to scare off a predator. I think it sounds adorable, so it wouldn't work on me. But um, perhaps if you, I suppose things wouldn't normally expect a moth to make a sound. So that's, um, it, might it might work in some situations. So I'll show you a few other noisy insects that I've seen on my travels. These are insects that I saw in Madagascar. So that big cockroach beside my hand there is called a hissing cockroach, and it makes a loud hissing sound when it's disturbed by a predator. You've got a cicada there up on the top, and that's, um, that's one of the noisiest creatures. And the, the creatures, the cicadas that I heard in Madagascar, only some of the teachers will get this. Some of them are probably even too young to remember what this sounds like, but, um, if you remember what a, a slow, broken internet connection sounds like, internet dial-up. I'm going to share a video so you know what I'm talking about. And then I better speed along because we've got a lot to fit in. I remember, I remember the slow internet dial-up sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm too I lost young. my notes. <laughs> Dean's too young, is he? Too young to remember. Can you hear this? So imagine thousands of these making this noise in the forest. constantly surrounded by noise, but it's actually quite relaxing. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, but it is, um, it is quite relaxing to be surrounded by loud insect noises all the time, which is why I think um, there's a tradition in certain countries to keep crickets in your house. Can anyone tell me in the chat box uh, so the names of some countries where this is a tradition.
Thailand, that's possible. Croatia, is that true? China, Brazil. So there's a lot of countries being named here. Personally, I only heard of two myself, um, and those are China and Japan. And the song that we are going to learn today is from Japan. So we're going to travel to Japan. I know that Eleanor and Dean have been practicing the words to this song, so they're going to help you learn. And um, Japan has 10 UNESCO biospheres. So there's lots of places where you can hear really cool insects making noises. Um, I have notes and videos everywhere. <laughs> so much I want to show you. So bear with me while I find the video of the song that we're going to learn. Are you ready, Dean? Did you did you practice? No. <laughs> but um, no. no. Shocked. No, I, I, I wanted to else, learn with all the other um, classes. So okay, that's fair. It's more fun learning together as a group, isn't it? So here we go. This is called uh, Mushi. Oh, I've totally lost the name. Anyway, you'll find out. Mushi no Ko. Ale matsu mushi ga naiteiru. Chinchiro 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 ri. Ale suzu mushi mo naki dashita. Din 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 din. Aki no yo naga wo naki tohosu. Ah, omoshiro i mushi no kohe. Kiri 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 su. Gacha 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 kutsu wa mushi. Ato kara uma oi oi tsuite. Chon 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 suichon. Aki no yo naga wo naki tohosu. Ah, omoshiro i mushi no kohe. Lovely. So I'll, I'll put the lyrics up on the on the share screen preview. <laughs> okay. Oh, one second. Sorry. I think I may have been a bit ambitious in <laughs> in how much information I wanted to share with you today. <laughs> Just get very very excited about insects, as you can see. So here we go. This is what it looks like in Japanese. You can all read this, right? No, not even a little bit. Well, it's a good thing that I also have it in English. Uh, there's a picture of a, a cricket being kept in a gourd in a Japanese household. Now this song is um, a Japanese Ministry of Education song from 1910. So people have been using their vocal cords and their ears to pass on this song for 112 years. Here we go. This is the translation. It's about the different species of, of crickets and grasshoppers and keiji dids in, in Japan um, and the sounds that they make. Ah, the pine cricket began to chirp. Chin -chu. So yes, Dean can, Dean can read out the, <coughs> I, the yellow. I, 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 will, I, will, I will try and read the yellow one. Okay, so chinchiru, chinchiru, chinchiru rin. Ah, a bell ring cricket also began to sing. Rin in rinny. Rin, rin, rin. <laughs> is this the sound that the insects make? It is. Okay, yes. got it, got it. Got and it. it's those yellow parts that, that you're all going to sing together in your classrooms, okay? I'm not going to make you sing the whole song because it's complex, but, um, but those are the parts that you're going to answer back with insect sounds. They chirp throughout the long fall night. <clears throat> oh, the voices of these funny insects. Kiri, 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 su. Lovely. Gacha, 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 gacha. The giant Katie did sing. That's a Katie did there being eaten by a spider in Madagascar and another one beside it. And you've got the bell cricket. That's the one with the round, elaborate wings at the top. And the pine cricket is on the left. Later, the unicolor Katie dids chime in. Chon, 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 chon. Beautiful. 
They chirp throughout the long fall night. Oh, the voices of these funny insects. So we'll repeat, we'll repeat the sounds. Okay, I'm gonna call, I'm just gonna say the sounds out loud as they're sung in the song. And Dean and Eleanor can repeat them. And everyone in their classrooms can repeat them as well after me. So it goes. I'm just gonna sing it through. <laughs> Lovely. Are Suzumushimo Naki Dashita Rin 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 Kiri kiri su. Kiri 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 su. Kachi 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 kutsu wa mushi. Kachi 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 kutsu wa mushi. Sounds just like an insect. Love it. Ato kara uma oi oi tsuite. Chan 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 su chan. Chan 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 su chan. So I want to dedicate this song to my Japanese choir friends Mika and Yuki and Saya and Ren. Um, Mika did uh, listen to my recording of this song and she said my accent is adorable. I don't know if that means that it's accurate but um, hopefully I'm not totally... Oh. Well, this song. Lucy said that it sounds like a Mary Poppins song and it has oh, that it feel does. to it. So well done, Lovely. Lucy. Thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so uh oops. So I think maybe you're ready to sit to respond in your classrooms. So I'm going to sing the in-between lines and you guys can sing the insect sound. Dean looks like he Oh, <laughs> Dean looks like he wants to hide his voice. <laughs> okay. Are matsu mushika naiteiru. Chinchu, chinchu, chinchu. Are suzu mushimo naki dashita. Rin, 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 rin. いのよなかをなきとすあおもしろいむしのこえきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりきりき
Okay, perfect. It may not come to me right away because it's, it's one of the more tricky uh, styles. <coughs> Impressive, isn't it? That's very impressive. Now, I think we have a few questions, um, and I think it might be good to answer those before we get into our poetry writing so we have some inspiration. So, I see that someone has asked, Why are beetles so big? And honestly, I don't know the answer to this question, but I would say that there are so many different types of beetles, and some of them are absolutely minuscule. So I have, I've looked at um, insects that are less than half a millimeter in size under the microscope. And then you've got the big Goliath beetles as well, which are like weighty, lumpy, chunky things. So what I'm guessing is, I know that, I know that way, way back, like millions of years ago, um, the insects were able to grow bigger. And I think it had something, now I'm, this is just totally in the way back in the back of my brain, but I think I have an idea that it had something to do with how much oxygen there was in the air. And now someone will need to look that up because I'm not sure if that's true. Okay. Um, Eleanor <laughs> Turner is going to answer this question live. <laughs> that, I'm, just, I'm just clicking that button. <laughs> so the next question okay. that came in is from Wendy Diggum. Um, and she would like to know how many species of ladybirds live in the Kerry biosphere? Would you That's know one that? you might know. I don't actually. <laughs> okay. How many are there in Ireland? Though? Oh no, I don't know. Um, I'm like, oh, hold on, where's my ladybirds? There's another question I, that you might know offhand is um, that we were talking about the hoverfly um, or the wannabe. Um, how do they make noise? Was the question oh, that yes. came in from Brenda Reynolds from way back. Well, before I answer that, I'll just show you. Um, this is this is the guide. Oh, it's invisible. This I is a guide. To, oh yes, you got a nice one there. It is says that from there's the twenty Bible? species of ladybirds in Ireland. So twenty in Ireland in total. Wow, that's, that's pretty, loads. That's and this chart I have is of the ladybirds of Britain and Ireland. So you can see the amazing diversity. Whoops, if Oops, you can see yep. it at all. Lots of different types. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a lot of different types, a lot of different numbers of spots and different colours. So, um, Eleanor, you're holding a, a swatch there. Where can you get yes. that? This is from the National Biodiversity Data Centre. So if oh. you search biodiversityireland.ie, I think, you can go to their store and you can get these. They're super handy because they have them all on little cards and it tells you a little bit about the insect and how to identify them. You can see there's lots of different ladybirds here. So it helps you if you find one, you can start to flick through and try and figure out which one it is. And they have one of those for, the look, Dean's got one for birds. Um, I've got another one here for butterflies. So there's a lot of different ones you can get. So it's definitely worth, if your class are really interested, you could get in touch with the, the biodiversity data center and see if you could get hold of some of those. This is and a this... nice one for bees because it's color coded by the color of their bums. So that's really handy. Interesting. <laughs> okay. There's some more questions coming in, which uh, if you want to take them down, we will. So how do you recognize a honey, uh, sorry, a hoverfly or a wannabe over Ooh, a honeybee? Question. 
And that's great. And I'll answer that with the one about how they make the sound. So I'm fairly sure that the sound is the sound of their wings motoring. So they flap their wings so fast, it just makes a buzzing sound. Um, and the, uh, the way you tell the difference is that honeybees have four wings, hoverflies have only two. Now sometimes it's hard to see the honeybee, uh, the four wings on the honeybee because they're kind of hooked together as if they were single wings. But they also have uh, all, all of that Hymenoptera group, the bees, <coughs> bees, wasps, ants, they all have um, a narrow waist. So they're, they have, their waist kind of goes in in the middle, whereas flies like hoverflies are kind of have a, a wider waist. They don't have that uh, thin part. Um, also, hoverflies have short antennae and bees always have long antennae. Uh, there's a few coming in about the ladybirds. Does the number of spots or dots on the ladybird mean anything? It just means that they're different species. So um, different types of ladybirds have different numbers um, and some often different colors as well. I see it says, how do you tell the difference between arachnids and insects as well? And that's to the number of legs mainly. So arachnids all have eight legs and insects have how many legs? Can anyone remember? Dean remembers six. <laughs> <laughs> also, also arachnids will have, um, they'll have their head and their thorax are kind of just one part and the abdomen. So they look like they just have two body parts, whereas insects have a head, a thorax and an abdomen. So three distinct body parts. Miss um, Dignam asks, uh, what are the main difference between crickets and grasshoppers? That's a really amazing question. Now, personally, I only know that's the first kind of big difference that I've learned is that the grasshoppers will rub their wings together to make the sound, or sorry, the crickets will rub their wings together to make the sound. Grasshoppers will rub their legs against their wings to make the sound. They are in the same order, the same group, um, but I would need to look into it in more detail to find out what the exact differences are. Um so uh, Jason has asked, how long have you been a creative entomologist? Oh, uh, in some ways for my whole life, because I've always been looking at insects and making art about nature, but officially uh, six or seven years now. I've been uh, in business six years, but I've been studying them forever. Yeah. <laughs> and so you can visit schools if schools want you to come and visit them through... Um, the Heritage the, Schools programme, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. The Heritage yeah. and Schools visits. Um, yeah, so we actually, uh, the Heritage and Schools scheme is actually giving free visits during Biodiversity Week. Um, so I think that's over the next week. So have a look into that. Yeah, lots going on uh, for National Biodiversity Week next week in all, uh, all parts of Ireland, I know, mm, um, yeah. and you can check that out. So do you want to get back to the poetry? Because I mean, if we don't, <laughs> we, also better, want yeah. get, we want to get that <laughs> in because uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the young people can come up with. Cool, and we may have time for more questions at the end then. Okay, so, um, so we've, oops, one second. So we've, we've uh, heard a beautiful song from Japan, which has described the sounds of the insects and the different types of insects. Um, also a little bit about how the, the author feels about them, finds them funny. So I want you all to think about um, your experience of listening to insects or watching insects. And uh, I'll give you the instructions in a second. So I originally called this the cross country poetry writing experiment. But then I found out we have a listener from the US and perhaps we have listeners from other countries as well. So I call it the cross planet poetry writing uh, experiment. So here are your instructions. Use your ears to listen carefully. So first of all, I'm gonna get you to close your eyes and I'll guide you in reflecting on what we have learned today. So let's do that. Um, for a couple of minutes. And yeah, listen to these uh, questions and thoughts and imagine, um, what think about what comes to mind as you're hearing them. So close your eyes. 
And remember a time when you heard an insect making a noise. Was it one insect or many making sounds together? It might have been last summer outdoors, or it might have been today during this webinar. Where were you? Were you indoors looking at a screen? Were you outdoors surrounded by plants? What was the weather like? Where do you think your insect likes to live? Could you see the insect or could you only hear its sound? Do you know what kind of insect it was? What was its name? Now it may be that some of you have never noticed hearing an insect before, but you could imagine one, you could make one up in your head. That's totally fine as well. Uh, did I already ask, can you remember the sound that it made? If you had to put that sound down in writing or in a description, what would it look like or sound like? What does the sound remind you of? What do you think your insect friend was saying, trying to say to you or to another insect? Who is it talking to? How did the sound make you feel? Would you like someone else to be able to hear the insect too? Would you be able to do an impression of the insect, what it sounds like? And how would you tell them to look for the insect and have a chance to be able to hear the insect themselves? Where would you tell them to go? What would you tell them to do when they got there? So you don't need to provide the answers to all of these questions, but if there's anything from that reflection that stands out in your head, focus on that for now. So you can open your eyes and just keep in mind that thought that you had from the reflection. And I'm going to give you three minutes to write one sentence, one poetic sentence um, or two, if you like, uh, about something that you liked about what you just rem imagined or remembered or something that you didn't like. We can also write a poem about something scary or uh, disgusting. Um, and uh, so you've got three minutes. You can, if, if you have some uh, paper and a pen handy, you can write that down. And uh, while you're working away on that, I'm going to ask Dean and Eleanor to um, to tell me what came to mind when they were doing the reflection. Well, I'll, I'll go first, Dean, if that's okay. I was thinking about um, a moth that came into my house. So it was inside my house and it was nighttime. So I have this little lamp in my bedroom that has like a cover around it. And the little moth was like flying against the cover and it, or, of the lamp. So it kept like, like if you imagine if you were in a tent and like tapping the outside of the tent, it was like like that. And so I couldn't get to sleep because this poor little moth was there. So then I woke up and I had to try and get the moth outside, but I didn't know what kind of moth it was. It was just like small and brown. Um, and I got a little glass and I tried to catch it in the little glass and take it back outside because the little noise was so disrupting. I couldn't like relax to get to sleep. It was like, <laughs> like that right beside my head. So that was what I was thinking about while you were talking. <laughs> oh, wow, lovely. That reminds me of um, living in my tent in Madagascar and you'd hear all kinds of strange sounds on the outside of the tent, like frogs hopping on it and mosquitoes buzzing, trying to find their way in. How about you, Dean? Okay, I've written something. I'm hoping this is okay. <clears throat> so, I'm a little insect lying in the grass. You can't find me. You can't find me. Chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep, chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep. I'm hiding in the grass. <laughs> so, it's a grasshopper and he's making that. <laughs> and he's chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep. And I did, I felt that, um, that feeling of 
curiosity and slight frustration when you can hear a grasshopper and you really want to see it and you're hunting around in the grass, but they're so well camouflaged, they're hard to spot until they, they jump. They make the noise over here and you walk over there and that one stops and then there's another one over there. And they're, <laughs> yes. and they're tricking you. They're very <laughs> clever. They are. I wonder if that's when they're, they're kind of calling and responding Maybe they're they're having a little argument about whose territory it is. Yeah, maybe they're just laughing at Dean, going like, "Hey, call him over here now. <laughs> he <can't laughs> yes. Call him back over this way." <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Amazing. So hopefully, uh, the young people will be writing their own bits of poetry, and in fact, um, there's no reason why uh, they couldn't enter that in our blog competition or as part of our blog competition you know that would oh, be amazing absolutely. to get um, there's a few coming in in the chat already yeah is there oh, oh great goodness, yeah. typing them that. in yeah so as soon as you're ready as soon as you've picked a, a, a couple of your most descriptive uh, lines or the the ones that stand out to you the most you can pop them in the in the chat um and as we're going along i'll i'll start to read some of them out and what I'll do for next week, um, we have another webinar next week, uh, on the 17th, I guess. Um, uh, I will put together a poem based on your lines. And it, may, it probably won't contain all the lines because that's mm -hmm. going to be about six that could be a lot. lines. <laughs> um, but something that captures the essence of, yeah. of what you We are. had a comment there, we, we need more time. And I mean, that's the thing, take as long as you want. You can spend the rest of the day if you want. Uh, making your poetry and then please send that back to um probably eleanor or even you know to you can the, email to it the biosphere to you can email it to us and then um, yeah we'd or love to have, then share um, some of that. the whatsapp number from last week my phone number you can whatsapp it to me if that's easier or you could email it to me and i can send them on to nessa that's perfect yeah there's, Maybe you there's want to put lots coming in the chat though you're to gonna have chat. you're gonna have a long poem with all these in the chat nessa <laughs> Yeah, and I've got two other webinars to or two other workshops to prepare for this week, so that's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and some writing of my own to do. I have a deadline, mm -hmm. so it's going to be a fun week. <laughs> so we got maybe I'll I, get some inspiration from your writing. We, we've got I'm a bumblebee. Can you see me? I can see the bee near the apple tree. Oh, there lovely. is some really mm. clever poetry coming Yeah, through. in the warm yeah. summer sky, the hungry humblebee buzzes, buzzes by. by. Yeah. The moth on the wall has a beautiful call. <gasps> Lovely. There are some poets in the classrooms out there. there. Really are. Oh my goodness <laughs> me, they're coming in. Roses are red, violets are blue. I like listening to insects, and so should you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there's some great. Um, nice emotions coming in as well. Mm -hmm. Last summer I both heard and saw a wasp buzzing around Tato's. I felt a little frightened and stepped away from it. That's a good, that's yeah. a good approach that's when you're good. dealing with a wasp. Yeah. Don't swat them, just step away. Step away. I was relaxing by lavender plants and saw and heard a furry bee sucking on a lavender plant. There's lots of bees, lots of bees buzzing, signaling the sound of summer. They definitely make me think of summer when I hear bees. A reminder of sunny days and delicious ice cream. Ladybirds have some spots. Butterflies look like moths. Honeybees buzzing around. Beetles are hiding underground. Oh my goodness, come on. They're just too brilliant. These are Slugs <laughs> are sloppy. Worms are wriggly. Bees are buzzy and flies are fluttery. Great. Oh, You're going to find out just how sloppy slugs and snails are when we have our a uh, webinar on exploring insects through the sense of touch. Oh, I'm glad you said touch and not taste. <laughs> yeah, there is a taste one. There is a taste one. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what is next like week, a, Nessa? Just out of curiosity. I actually can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. Next week. Hold on, I might be able to find it. Da, da, da. Some people are off for their lunch. Thank you for joining us and yes, have a very lovely lunch. Yes enjoy your your lunch break oh this one's great let's play hide and seek crick 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 don't run away human ah i'm so scared i said no no don't run away bye 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 crick 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 and i hear the cricket cry 
Brilliant. That's, session that's three. That's like a description of week. Dean's experience. <laughs> so next week, session three is exploring insects through taste. Oh, uh, excellent. Are, are, are jelly worms allowed? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bring jelly worms. They are. <laughs> There is, there is the teacher resources document. So all the okay. teachers out there have a quick look at that because I think there's some hints about things that you can have ready for next week's webinar. And um, so if you registered already, you should have got an email with a link to that document in it. Um, if not, you can go onto the carrybiosphere.ie website, find the resources section and it's right there. So you can download it there and have a look at what you need to get ready for next week. Yes, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> as always there we're just going to hang out here because there are still some people sending in a whole heap of their poetry and um, so we're going to keep the webinar session over but i think we are officially finished so if people are waiting to run away on their lunch break you can totally do that now once you've sent in your your line for your poem Absolutely. and I, it would be really nice to get them uh, via email as well so that we can collate them together and maybe share them on social media and our website i'd love to put some on our website and i'd love to get yeah. some of you young people entering our competitions because uh yeah that'd be amazing to have your look at your fantastic ideas i saw a wasp it looked very lost that's beautiful these are brilliant. There's, there's so many, I can't read them all, but I'm really excited about putting something together out of this. Yeah. If anyone has a few more questions, um, we should probably answer those before we have to head there's off. There's one uh, the Q&A that's waiting for you there. It okay. says, what advantages do flying insects have uh, over those that stay on the ground? Ooh, so I guess different insects uh, and the way that they move around the places that they live Will, will live in different niches so they can take advantage of different uh, different foods and different hiding places and escape from different predators in different way different ways and flying insects of course will be able to get to the tops of trees they'll also be able to migrate so they may um, their larvae might eat plants in one place and then they may migrate somewhere else to to mate or to have another um, brood um, that, that means they can colonize new places as well so when yeah. the when the land was reclaimed from the sea in the Netherlands the beetles that could fly were able to get further and they actually some beetles don't have wings and some do they did an experiment and they found that the further out onto that reclaimed land you got the more beetles had wings the more the greater number of the beetles had wings mm. so yeah um, but like you say it's great for being able to escape anything that's trying to eat you on the ground but then you run into <laughs> all other dangers of things trying to eat you in the air okay yeah, there's some more poetry birds in the sky and um, oh honeybee oh honeybee come to me oh honeybee from kilkenny that was oh. ronan <laughs> <laughs> I live in a hive, I sting people day and night, but only when they're not nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. Insects flirting, insects chirping, buzz, buzz, buzz. It's a wasp and it's lost a wing. Bing, bing, bing. I heard a little cricket just two days ago, hiding in the tall long grass and he wouldn't leave me alone. With that little crick, 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 every little second, I just went in and left him alone. Oh, I like, it's interesting to hear the the way that we say the sounds in Ireland compared to the way they're sung in Japan, that we hear them differently mm -hmm. and, and write them differently. Like the crick, crick, crick compared to the chun, chun, chun. Is there anyone else out there from other countries who wants to tell us how what a grasshopper sounds like in your country? I'm wondering if there's different names for um insects mm -hmm. in different parts of ireland because True. you know lots of insects can have their own um local names um this one's what we all recognize them as yeah I'm a, there's a there's a map somewhere online of the different names of wood lice in different places and there's just mm -hmm. so many i think i've mentioned this every time i have a webinar because i'm so <laughs> amazed by it roly poly bug <laughs> roly polies yeah. uh pill bugs uh monkey peas 
um, sow bugs, all kinds of things. Okay, so listen, I think we're, I think we're there. There's no more questions. There's lots of, uh, there's lots of um, more poetry coming in, but like I say, if they can send that on to us, that'd be really great. Nessa, thank you so much again for a really interesting workshop. Um, My pleasure. A great really time. fun. Great to join in with the singing part of it anyway. <laughs> yeah, well done. Fair play to you. You're, you're the best. You're the best singer, Dean. <laughs> Definitely puts the the character. Yeah, and I'm uh, <laughs> really looking forward to next week because um, you know I, this time I get a little bit hungry and all the children get a little bit hungry, so um, maybe they they'll be able to stay for a bit longer and uh, eat some insects. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> you won't be hungry next week. Do make sure you look at the resource because we'll definitely need a few things for next week. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, everyone. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Nessa. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Bye, everyone. Take care. Salon. Bye.